Here in the serene countryside, we witness the life cycle of the Bombyx Mori, nature's most misunderstood performance artist. Its brief existence, a mere 40 days, is not a life. It engages in a relentless regimen of carbohydrate, loading, consuming vast quantities of mulberry leaves to prepare for its final, great work. This is not merely spinning a cocoon. It is the construction of a solitary architectural marvel, a self-imposed prison of pure protein. Within this opulent tomb, the artist prepares for its metamorphosis, but the Council of Elders has other plans. For them, the pupa's transformation is an interruption. The true art lies not in the moth, but in the monument it builds. The ritual begins. The cocoons are submitted to the great cauldron, a baptism by fire and water. This is not an act of cruelty, but one of liberation. The high priestess, using her ceremonial wands, dissolves the pupa's binding agent, freeing the singular, unbroken thread of its life's work. This is the silkworm's ascension into textile immortality. Each pupa, a necessary sacrifice to the god of fabric. Now, the sacred rites of congregation commence. The thread whisperers gather the ghostly filaments, twisting them into a stronger, unified consciousness. A pilgrimage follows, a slow, meditative walk where the elders stretch the nascent fabric, expanding it through sheer force of will and communal focus. Their synchronized movements are a ballet of creation, stretching for hundreds of repetitions. Finally, the Grand Weaver summons the spirit of the silk to the ancient loom. This device is not mere wood and string. It is a complex analog computer. With each pass of the shuttle, she weaves the threads of countless lives into a single, unified narrative. The result is not a blanket, but a tangible chronicle of sacrifice, ritual, and rebirth. Soft to the touch, yet heavy with the weight of history.